Good evening, my name is Alex Hamill. My name is Ben Shapiro. And you're watching Examining Cinema. So, Beneath the Planet of the Apes is like a surreal, odd, obscure sequel to the 1967 cult classic sci-fi film Planet of the Apes. It's uh, full of that <clears throat> brilliant 70s and 60s fucking goodness. Yeah. Uh, if, that's, if that's what you want, that's what we'll get out of this. <laughs> well, yeah, you were the one who encouraged me to watch these movies. I, lo I love these movies. <clears throat> Just because... I don't know, it's all so off the wall and silly and I love the the prosthetics of like the apes and stuff, it's all so stupid. Yeah. Right? Well, I, I had seen the first one when I was a kid, uh, a neighbour was like, You like Star Wars? You like Lord of the Rings? You should watch this apes movie! And I watched it and I was like, yeah, you know. As like a ten year old, you're like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it, it's good. And then I didn't watch any of the others. And then you encouraged me to watch them and yeah, I just, I love the way this movie pivots, it's like, not at all what you'd expect from a conventional sequel. It, it, it does the beats for like the first 40 minutes, sets up this new character, and then it just takes a left turn. And oh, it, it stops being about apes for a large part of the narrative, which is surprising. Well, I was actually going to say is that it's interesting that, uh, and a lot of movies from this era are like that, where, you know, a traditional sort of sequel, these days, they're, they're, it's so easy just to whip out a sequel that's just literally the same movie again and again and again. Yeah. Where, whereas, you know, these movies, all of them, mm. right, they take the sort of premise and they and they stick something else onto it, right? It's a continuation, or it's you know, it's it's a different story. Yeah. With yeah. with the with the same sort of um, uh, 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 continuity. From yeah. the previous movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just like taking a risk, too. Like, doing something different. It's like Star Trek. They had Ratha Khan and they had Search for Spock, which was like the next thing. And the one after that, they go back in time because whales are fucking yeah. <laughs> wanting to fucking get in contact with them. And yeah, I feel like back in the day, sequels took a lot bigger risks. And this is definitely somewhat of a departure from the first film. It's definitely not where I expected it to fucking go at all. <laughs> Well, it's um, it's like uh, uh, another one that's brought to mind is <clears throat> 2001: Space Odyssey in 2010, mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah, yeah. which is again, that's just it's the it's it's a continuation of the story yeah, to yeah, something yeah. else. Yeah, something you know? completely different. Yeah, different flavor, different tone, different world. Uh, yeah, so the basic story of this is we have our main character, Charlton Heston played him, and the reason that he's not in this one that much is because he didn't want to do it. Oh, really? Yeah, he wanted to film like a week. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll be in it, but I'm only going to be in it for a week. Back in the day, sequels were like frowned upon, like they, they seemed like contrived and derivative. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, they, they, there wasn't a lot of sequels back in the day. Like, you, you think of all the classic movies, they just made them, and that was it. Mm. And yeah, 20th Century Fox is like, nah, 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 nah. We're gonna <laughs> do this. made some money. The Apes Extended yeah. Universe. <laughs> we need to make some more money. And Heston's like, sequel, what the fuck is that? You got me for a week. <laughs> <laughs> so we get this new character named Brent, who is, uh, it looks very similar to Charlton Heston. Oh, generic, character. generic, like, Action, 70s yeah. white man. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just like, uh, well, who do we get? Well, we just get the same character. <laughs> yeah. We'll give him a different name. <laughs> Was the runner up to play uh, to play the role that yeah. Charlie has to play? My name's Brent. Brent. No, no, no. I, I don't want to hurt you. I, I just want to know where I am. Uh, yeah, that they pawn off um, Nova, the chick <laughs> off onto him as well. <laughs> yeah, such an awful. 
awful like choice for that role, if it's even a role, it's just she's just a fucking like a placeholder. Well, yeah. So the humans are mute, so her character doesn't talk, and then like she has two emotions. They always cut to her with either like just dumbfounded or slap like, jawed. Yeah, like 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 they're just completely puzzled. They'll be talking to her, and they cut to her. Like, you should do a super cut of all the different reactions. <laughs> Well, yeah, she's got confused and she's got surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of like, like worried, like, oh, and then like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's she's like, fucking beautiful. Yeah, well, that's yeah. That they chose like some fucking so, model yeah. uh, who doesn't need to act. <laughs> she just needs to look pretty. That that that's it. And look confused. Yeah, yeah. Wander around in some skimpy fucking slave. Savages, savages. They might as well have just given her like a leaf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, if she has no dialogue, I guess it's hard for her to have a character. She no, dies sure, She yeah. dies at the end, which is an emotional beat for Charlton Heston's character. That pushes him over the edge to go, Fuck these apes! <laughs> They've taken too much! They killed my beautiful slave girl who was mute! She was perfect! He, he had the perfect relationship, eh? Yeah. The perfect one-sided relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No saying anything. <laughs> well, sweetheart, what do you think we should do? Oh, uh, what's that? Nothing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it goes through the same thing as the first one with the Ape Society and whatnot. It's it's shifted into a more militaristic uh, movie. The first one it was very like a uh, political, scientific, religious kind of exploration and talking about dogma and religion and science. And this one shifts into like. A uh, really heavy-handed allegory for Vietnam. We get like the protesting age yeah. and like peace. We want peace, which is like protest it's... culture. Oh, yes. of society bad. Oh, that's the funny. political allegory is very in-depth mutual, and intellectually. Mutant, <laughs> mutant veiny people bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of contextual story elements that are super inconsistent and not handled very well in this <laughs> yeah. movie. Right? Like again, it's super cheesy, schlocky stuff. But um, it's like we were saying, you know, the scale of the, the ape civilization is yeah. like. So sometimes they'll show that you get the sense that there's like 200 people here, mm. especially like the protests, right, and the, and the military. <laughs> right, yeah, there's out. like six apes sitting on the floor. <laughs> Handmade <laughs> like There's ones. like 10, there's like 10 huts or whatever. And yeah. They're talking, and they're talking about how uh, they got a famine because they can't expand past their borders. I so, guess, yeah, how much food do you need to feed 500 people? Like 10 people. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I, I guess it's supposed to be a planet of the apes. But well, it, well. It, it's, a, it's a small gathering of the apes. I mean, the, the, the bit where they're like marching on the Forbidden Zone, I guess there's a lot more military there, but. They got a lot of extras, yeah, for that, those sequences. That one scene. They just don't have like the infrastructure for the town. They never no. show like a. A big thrawling ape city with no all farming, this. Yeah. Like, where's the food coming from? Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no, no infrastructure yeah. or society or waste management. It's just kind of telling you what's happening. Oh well, yeah. this is the context. Oh, okay. It's a vast ape city. <laughs> yeah, well, but but that, I don't know if they really like <coughs> said that kind of. They said that they're in a famine. And they can't expand past their there's borders. There's so much land there that is just ripe for growing. They're crops. just, they're just, they're, 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 they're like in Arizona, they're, like rich, nutritious soil, vast, vast hills. They're just roaming stuff. around like the the scenes where they're chasing old mate Nova around, and they're just roaming around yeah, like yeah. just bare like forest area. Like there's nothing. There's no infrastructure yeah, there. Yeah. Plow the ground. Then, put some seeds in like, there. Like grow something there. Why can't you grow some fucking potatoes? They're just foraging. They haven't discovered agriculture. <laughs> Thank you.
They have guns, but they don't have agriculture. There's another thing. There's another thing that's inconsistent as well. Is their their actual knowledge of humans, mm. what they were and what they versus what they are now? Because they keep being like, oh yeah, you know, humans can't talk, and mm. humans are just savages or with low intelligence. But then, like, especially at the end, they're talking about this weapon was made by man. You know, yeah. and it's like okay, but and even when they're talking about. Um, you know, what apes aren't mm. in comparison to humans. You know, yeah. we aren't, we don't make the weapons of humans and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, so mm. do you know that humans <laughs> used to like talk and rule and stuff or do you not know? <laughs> it's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the military commando is just like, humans are stupid. But like the first movie, it sets up like this lie, like Dr. Sayers. Yeah. yeah. He's covering up the fact that apes came from people and he's, yeah, he's, he's hiding it, but he is aware that they were smart. I think, like, there was this whole fucking thing where Charlton Heston's character was speaking in the middle of, like, the town square. He could like, talk. He could talk. He could talk. I can, I can sing. sing. It had to come up. It had to come up. Yeah, no, it's such a great fucking reference. Yeah. 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 He can talk, 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 I can sing. Ooh, help me, Dr. Sayers. Dr. Sayers, Dr. Sayers. Dr. Sayers, Dr. Sayers. Dr. Sayers, Dr. Sayers. Dr. Sayers. Oh, Dr. Sayers. Uh, yeah, so Dr. Sayers is... Well, they all should be aware now, because there was this big fucking incident with this human that came and talked and, like, yeah, made an uh, uprising. But they're, they're, they're like, nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah yeah, we're not, we're not going to talk to you. Yeah, it's funny. Humans actually, are dumb. Humans are dumb. We're smart. It's funny, actually. I never actually watched the first one. Yeah. I never watched the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I watched the first one uh, ages after I watched the, mm. the other ones. It, it's one of those things, and I said about, like, the, you know, the iconic ending sequence. It, it's... It's sad that this is so comical because it's just been <laughs> reverberated through endless pop culture references. But yeah, you know the beats, you know what it is, you know the storyline, you know everything. But but yeah, it, it's quite an intelligently writ movie. I like it, yeah. Yeah, there's no like action or anything. The first one is very much about like, yeah, the idea of dog Metaphor and all this yeah. allegory, metaphor yeah. and allegory, metaphor and allegory. The idea of like closed-minded people in science and how that's Racism not productive for science. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then this movie shifts to these underground mutants living in like central New York station. And the, the sets are pretty impressive for the most so, part. Some of the sets are really yeah, nice. Yeah, they have some, yeah, quite big sets. And yeah, these fucking mutants <laughs> worshipping a nuclear bomb. I don't know. I, I guess, it doesn't directly say it, but I guess the destruction of the planet was because of a nuclear fallout, that's why they're mutants, and that's how yeah, well, I, I should we destroy ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah, well, they don't, they don't go into it, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, Which mutant, you don't need to. But people that mutate and get telepathic, and uh, it's weird though, the, their motives are not really made clear. Like, like, like what, what is it they're trying to do? They're worshipping a bomb. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, they worship a bomb. They have but telekinetic or they're... telepathic powers. Telekinetic is when you move stuff. Yeah, like telepathic. telepathic is when you talk. That's to fine, people. that's fine. Yeah, Even yeah. though that's inconsistent. Yeah. But the, the point being is do they want to use the bomb or do they not want to use the bomb? That's the question. Yeah, they want to know about the apes. Right. They want to know yeah, if they're yeah, a threat, they, if they're attacking they, them. They, yeah, they want to know whether or not they're task that they've been tasked with mm. is in jeopardy or not because they talk about how okay where we have this task and we're here for one purpose mm. but they don't actually tell us what the purpose yeah, is yeah, yeah. But it's like we're here for one purpose which is to <laughs> safeguard the bomb or something yeah i guess but it's like fully active and we, they, we need to sit in that cave and worship the bomb yeah that's our purpose that's our purpose <laughs> but we're going to use it or whatever but we don't want to use it i don't but yeah know. I, at the end he threatens to use it which is quite great. You got all these people marching in in fucking rubber ape masks in the sky. You get a bomb, man. I'm gonna blow all of you up. And they're like, what? They're and, and, they have, and they have the same reaction again. Oh, he can talk. It's he like, can talk. I can talk. I can talk. I can talk. Like, we've done this. <laughs> we, we've already seen Charlton Heston. We, need, we needed more musical numbers in it. You're gone, eh? Roger. 
Even the surprise from the two, um, the two chimpanzee people when what's his face talks. Yeah. Oh, Cornelius and oh. Serial, Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know whether I missed a scene or something, but it, it, he just like wanders into their heart. Like he doesn't know them. Well, so what's implied? Zero? Yeah. So what's implied is that um, is that Nova would have taken him somewhere mm. safe. Yeah, yeah, so she knew that because they were the only sympathetic people to humans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, the things I like about this movie is <laughs> there's this great interrogation scene where they're like grilling him on mm. information and it gets really weird, the editing gets all quick and cut and they use like a sample every time they, yeah, like put a, oh, a ding. vision into his mind, yeah, ding. ding, and then it starts like ding. It's actually really, a, whoa, um, that's Jesus. Not that's not good. Um, it's actually well handled after the the initial setup for the mm. tele, uh, for the telepathic stuff. Yeah. Initially, yeah. because you don't want to be in a position where um, you don't want the information to be relayed where the actor who's speaking versus the actor who's doing the tel telepathic stuff. It's just repeating what they've said to them. It's like the um, Han Solo Chewbacca thing, where like he oh, repeats everything. Yeah. Says, what do you mean? Well, what's that, Chewie? You think that you're, you're hungry? Yeah. Like, so why would you repeat everything? It's like it's say? like the the natural course is that you would just have a one-sided mm. vocal conversation. Which is what they do it. in the first scene, and you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the audience is Ding. dumb. Oh, you know, uh, I what? don't know. I don't know where it is. Yeah. Ding. Well, I don't know how to get back. Yeah. 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 I don't know, he's speaking to him. Yeah, I don't know. I think we came through some sort of time rift. It's yeah. okay, and you can you can fill in the blanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's got to be. I'm sure that there are examples of movies where they do exactly what we just said not to do. Right? Yeah, yeah, and repeat everything the first. And just yeah, which just seems <laughs> it just seems fucking stupid. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Assuming the audience are idiots and they won't understand <laughs> a very basic concept. <laughs> Yeah, I also, the, the reveal of the mutants when they take off their masks is so fucking weird and odd and crazy. I love how there's no good side either. You got like the barbaric apes and you got the mutants who are fucking mutants. <laughs> and this guy just trapped in the middle of this fucking nightmare. I don't know what the fuck's happening, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the mask thing, I couldn't help but thinking when they're supposed to be wearing masks, the actors aren't wearing masks. <laughs> yeah. And when they're not supposed to be wearing masks, they're wearing masks. Yeah. It's really meta. <laughs> it not the... wearing masks when they are, oh, yeah, it's fucking weird. Wait, which is cool, the, the actual Devaney mask outfit looks really great. Yeah, the prosthetics are surprising. Looks gross as Even the apes. Like, yeah, I said to you while we were watching this, the first one was like a decade before Star Wars. Yeah. This is like... 69 or something? I'm like 50 years old. I've, I've said repeatedly, I love the the, the masks and the prosthetics mm -hmm. of the apes. I, I like how janky it is. Yeah. And yeah. I like I like when you've got an extra, the, there's two types of masks. There's the articulate ones and then there's the, the background mask. ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's just too thick rubber. Yeah. It doesn't move, their mouth doesn't move or anything. It's yeah. excellent. I love it. You know, yeah. it's some cheesy, cheesy garbage. Yeah, it's people in rubber ape hey, masks. <laughs> <laughs> I kept on, like feeling bad for the extras too in like that army marching scene just being out in the hot Arizona Oh sun. yeah, well they're in full body suits. Yeah. Right? yeah well, yeah. at least at least the main characters were. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they just had like the arms on when they had clothes on. Mm, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, one of the things that's really great about these movies as well is the scoring of it all. Mm. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, we've talked about where you can have, like, sort of music that, that invokes an emotion mm. that carries a scene and that's bad. Yeah. Because yeah. the scene isn't carrying itself. Mm. Um, it's over cliche. It's over cliche. It's a stuff. sad scene, so I'll play a minor scale. It's kind, of, it's kind of like this, but kind of not. The music's super jarring and tense. Mm. Yeah, and and they use it for tension, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it's unique enough. It's interest. It has its own flavor. Yeah, it's yeah. like this is the Planet of the Apes saga score. Yeah, it sounds yeah. and it's fucking cool. Yeah, right. It's like seventies, sixties garbage <laughs> with like this this weird. <laughs> wee, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, wee, 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 wee. and it's like yeah, I'm, I love. It. But in this movie. They use the scoring inconsistently, which is bad. Mm. So there's moments. So the the way that they kind of establish what you should expect from the scoring and the scenes 
is okay, there's a scene of tension, yeah. so we're gonna go, wah, 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 and yeah, then there's yeah, a yeah. scene of quiet where you're left with just the the actor and their reactions to whatever's happening. Yeah. Like the realization that, you know, uh, the, the planet got nuked or something. Mm. But there's one scene where they're doing a really dramatic chase scene. Yeah, and there's no like music. And uh, it, it just feels empty. And it feels really empty. And then there's a scene where they're in uh, the train station, the first, the subway station, the first time, and there's no music, and that's fine. Mm. It's just kind of what, and you're you're left to breathe in the in yeah, what's happening. He's, right. He's coming to, well, he, yeah, he's figuring out what to do now. Right. And then, but then a later scene where it snaps back to him in the subway, they've got the the music going again. And it just doesn't, it feels inconsistent. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not that there's now tension because that scene leads into them having to leave. Yeah. It's like when there is no tension for the characters mm. in this scene, they're, they're doing the music and yeah. it just, it's inconsistent. Yeah, well, it's like an atypical symphonic score, like schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. There's lots of like ascending and descending scales, like like typically like there's music theory and you know like a set of scales for happiness, and then it it, it takes that and just like Bruh! well, there's lots it's of all fucked and there's, like there's lots of miscellaneous noises as well. Yeah, there's yeah, like yeah. crashes, and, and, and tangs, yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of miscellaneous. Yeah, stuff. So it's like schizophrenic and off-putting and obscure which, and warped, which and is stopped. kind of. That's kind of the point of the series, right? Is that they're in this nightmare. Yeah, like you, it, you set up like your hero, the, the person the audience sees through and they just wake up into this fucking nightmare hellscape. Like, it's like you know, when, 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 when they rock up to the, to the, to the, the, the ant, uh, ape commune, mm. or 20 apes or something. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're having the thing and it's like... And he's like, fucking a planet full of apes? <laughs> yeah, this is a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's surreal, <laughs> crazy, from his perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, to see that, it would have been amazing to see all this stuff when it first come out. Oh yeah, because there was nothing like it. Yeah, it was revolutionary yeah, for its yeah. time. So for Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> so the score, the score suits that sort of atmosphere. That's mm, what's. There's just a, yeah, like a few missing parts, and as you said, a uh, part where maybe it shouldn't have been. Mm, mm. But the score itself is fucking amazing. Yeah, it's fucking, it's cool. Mm. And um, you know, they had the chase scene. The chase scene looked good. Uh, except, you know, the, the rear screen projection stuff, it needed more contrast, it was all washed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's fucking old technology. They just need to, they just need to get somebody to, to, to just, mm. uh, increase the contrast or, or and decrease the brightness yeah. a little bit on the background well, shots. I, I assume this has had, like, a full, like, Blu-ray fucking release where they've gone through it, but I've, like, the DVDs are just, like, I haven't done anything no, to no, it. No, they just, just like yeah. put it straight on. It's all grainy. You can see all the film grain, which is kind of cool. And yeah, the matte paintings stick out way more and everything. Well, they but except when they had that big set piece, right? Yeah, there was one matte painting where it was like in the foreground, so it looked really good. Some of it's just inconsistent lighting with the um with the matte paintings in the back, yeah. like the, the tunnel matte paintings. Mm, yeah, 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 that that there's at least two I think mm. that are just washed out, and you yeah, just too need to bright. you just need to darken it a bit. Yeah, that's fair. We need to talk about that scene too where the army of the apes rocks up and the mutants, they create all these visual projections and it's all these apes upside down, crucified, yeah. like writhing in pain yeah. and blood running and then they get their lawgiver and he's bleeding from everywhere. This movie was like PG back in the 60s. <laughs> it's like, yeah, PG. Yeah, yeah. It's like people being crucified yeah. upside down. Different before. sensibilities, eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. like you, you take your 10 year old to see this and it'd be like normal. Yeah. Oh, little Billy's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking introducing Ella to a whole bunch of shit, eh? Yeah. I don't want to like, you know, show her shitty Disney movies. I showed her Princess Mononoke the other day. Which is such a yeah, great yeah. movie. But you need to like show it to them when it's impactful. Like, you can't show it to them when they're 15. Yeah, because they're already desensitized to yeah. everything. Yeah, like that scene where that pig god at the beginning like rots away. Yeah, like, it's got a little disgusting woman. I can't, and she's like, eh. That's what you want. That's yeah, that, well, that, that's that uh, Studio Ghibli bloody, you know, uh, weird Japanese nostalgia stuff that mm. will sit with it, right? Yeah. But it's like um, it's like Jasper's doing with his kids. 
he's basically repeating what Jasper, you and I did, mm. right? Which is like when I was maybe too young, I watched Alien. Yeah, I was shown yeah. Alien. Mm. And it had a huge impact on yeah. my tastes later on down the track. Yeah, absolutely. If you're exposed to that early on, then your tastes will become more eclectic and informed and, and adulty. It needs to have an impact. Like Jasper showed uh, William E.T. right at the perfect age because William cried when E.T. died. Oh, yeah. Like you yeah. got that perfect emotional beat. Yeah. If you see E.T. when you're 20, you're like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Stupid. He's <laughs> ugly. I hope he dies. Just let the uh, government <laughs> dissect him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so yeah, this is like horrifically violent. The end sequence, fucking <laughs> Zero dies, and then what's Charlton Heston's character die? He dies. Uh, Brent, the character we've been following this whole time, he just like there's a shot him like up against the wall, and like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Gets shot like five times, and then Charlton Heston's character, he just like, fuck, fuck it, it. <laughs> fuck all of this, hits the world, bomb, then blows up, and there's a little dialogue thing. We, 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 we needed a shot of the planet cracking in half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cheesy, <laughs> nonsensical, yeah, the little dialogue thing, it's like, on the blah 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 date, this solar system, this green planet, it exploded at the end. <laughs> Go home, go home now. Perfect. The movie's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, such a fucking uh, bum note. The first one ends on, oh my god, the Statue of Liberty, the planet has been destroyed. Well, the big twist, right? Yeah, yeah, what the twist? The second one ends on everything being destroyed. The third one ends on uh, Zero and Cornelius getting shot down by the military and throwing their fucking baby ape into the water. But then it turns out that they actually switched their baby ape. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And well, uh, Ricardo Montalban's in it. It was calm. <laughs> the, the, the deep lore, the deep lore of the planet of the apes franchise. <laughs> I like how they made the third one, though. It's like, oh, the planet's destroyed. What do we do? Oh, maybe they went back in time. <laughs> yeah. Cornelius and Zero got in a time machine before the whole planet exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you still gotta watch the, um... Yeah, well, I don't think I've seen... I've seen most of four, and I don't think I've seen five at all. Is it five? The one that... No, it's the right... The, the one where they're still the pets or whatever. Are there five? God! There's, uh, Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Conquest... Fuck, I don't know. Rise? No, that's... that's there, there's the one. first one, the one we just watched, the one where they go back in time. <laughs> And it's like a fish out of water, like comedy, with Zero and Cornelius and their baby. <laughs> yeah, then, 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 then there's the fourth one where um, the army is kind of rising and the Planet of the Apes is coming. Then there's a fifth one which I haven't seen, mm. but supposedly would conclude it with some type of Have you seen the resolution. Um, have you seen the modern ones? Oh, uh, the first two, yeah. There was a Tim Burton remake in the 2000s. Oh, wasn't was... that Ridley Scott or was that Tim Burton? It's Tim Burton. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Well, maybe um, maybe Ridley Scott was like executive yeah, producer. Yeah, I think right? I think he was. You know, you know how they do the Spielberg thing yeah. from Steven Spielberg, and then like he walked on set once and got a coffee, and they're like from Steven Spielberg. Um, so maybe Ridley was like executive, executive, executive producer. <laughs> uh, there's this one great scene. In one of them, I think it's the second one. It's so fucking. Those movies are so stupid. Oh, the, the new one. Yeah, 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 it's so yeah. bad. Um, yeah. uh, uh, where you've got they set up an asshole character, and it's literally the 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 the, the, the most cliche set of circumstances where they're sort of they're parlaying mm. with the apes or whatever, yeah. and this guy's like a super anti. Ape racist asshole character. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, you, you're two D villain. Yeah, you do, well, yeah. yeah. No depth but he's like an ones. extra character. He's only there to <laughs> instigate a conflict yeah, with them yeah. by like um. It's a plot device more than a character. The main characters go off to do something, and there's apes there or something, mm. right? And the apes are clearly not hostile, but they but there's some miscommunication with the asshole. Yeah, who just yeah. interprets their every action to be like hostile, yeah. and he shoots them even though they were told. Not to bring guns or whatever, <laughs> he brought a gun, yeah, bro, because yeah. he doesn't. I don't trust those apes, yeah, or whatever, right? And he fucking shoots one of them, which 
triggers the whole conflict and it's like fuck it out <laughs> you can't bait that shit up it's so stupid oh yeah i've watched the first two first one was like this isn't even this is like james franco and um his dad had like was it was stuff. it james franco it was, was. It, was it deadpool uh, uh Ryan Reynolds. yeah i think it was james franco <laughs> <laughs> And then the second one I watched in the cinema and it was just like kind of dumb, you know? Big massive explosions oh, and yeah. people will like roll and be fine and stuff. Which, you yeah, know, suspension of disbelief. It's we just watched a movie with people in rubber eight masks. I can suspend my disbelief for that, but not for like... Yeah, I don't know. Physics in action not working? I don't know, it just, I watch, I don't know what the difference is, but the, I watch this movie and I go, yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I'm interested well, in what's happening. Well, this is like eclectic and weird and obscure and different where they felt like sanitized generic Hollywood yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had all the beats that you expect, which is all the beautiful CGI and you know your beginning, middle and end and you know Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just boring. It wasn't unique. No, it wasn't no. interesting. Well it doesn't it doesn't even have to be like unique. It just has to be it just has to be uh, uh not the same fucking crap that's been shoveled for engaging. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's On engaging. some intellectual level. <laughs> you know? It's like yeah, so um that's funny. And then the war, the war of the planet of the apes. No, that's the one I haven't seen. Oh, there. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they had the big blood explosion. Crap-poor! crap There's a scene from South Park in, um... Imagination Land, where they're bringing in, uh, all the... They're, they're trying to figure out what to do, and so they're yeah. bringing in all the... All the, the big directors, like Mel Gibson and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Have yeah. you seen the... the I the watched clip? it when I came out. There, there, there's, a clip, there's a clip where um, Mel Gibson, where instead of like making one of the South Park characters, they've just superimposed like yeah, skulls on his face. Yeah, yeah. It's like, ah, manipulates yeah. them, <laughs> twists them. And then he's like, he actually is like really good. Yeah. But they, they, they have Michael Bay in, and it's like, you know, Michael Bay, you know, we're all good fans in <laughs> film. Do you have, you know, any ideas, you know? Well, what if we go, and, and, and try. And a truck stops and you know tumbles like a blah and blah. It's yeah, like that's it, what those movies were. It, it's spectacle. It's so it's not about narrative. It's about the spectacle. Was there any explosions in this movie? <laughs> no, it was fire. <laughs> that was fire. <laughs> really shitty, shittily super punk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, another thing as well as the inconsistencies with the uh, mutants' use of telepathic. Powers mm, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like we get the hypocrisy thing. It was really hand up, like how the the hypocrisy of them. But that's fine. Yeah, right? we're non-violent now. Fight to the death. <laughs> yeah, we just kill everybody. <laughs> um, okay. Well, so but yeah, we're gonna make you choke out this fucking random. They are a peaceful race. Yeah. They'll force you to fucking smash each other in with maces. <laughs> he <laughs> says that. And you're like, wait, what? What? So could you just? <laughs> just go back for a second. Just, just can, can you just say that again, but slower? <laughs> I'm cutting the clip here. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Brent, we're a peaceful people. We don't kill our enemies. We get our enemies to kill each other. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, okay, that's fine. So, but they establish like what they can and can't do. Mm, mm, but mm. then they get all wishy-washy about mm. when they're explaining what they can and mm. can't do. Well, that they say to old mate Brent that they can um, trigger the brain in some way to cause physical pain. Yeah. And then when Cornelius figures out it's a vision, all these all the burning fire. mayhem. Yeah, they should have triggered a, a physical response in. <laughs> so oh, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! It's a vision. No, oh, it's not a vision at all. <laughs> it was a mistake. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, and then, like, why can't they make them, like, kill each other and... Uh, they hold up a wall of, like, telepathic powers and when the apes march in, like, cause them all immense physical pain. But they, uh, they kind of... Uh, but they uh, all give up. <laughs> that lady, like, takes her, like, cyanide yeah, and she's charts, not even, not even. They're all scattered to the wind <laughs> and they're, like, one guy left at the bomb. <laughs> Which doesn't they just, even... Yeah, they just immediately give up. <laughs> well, so, um, um... They kind of, maybe like explain it away but not really i thought that maybe they did where they talked about how they interrogated two apes before but then they said mm -hmm. oh you know we had apes standing here right where you are but uh either their skulls were too thick or they didn't actually know anything mm -hmm. and it's like okay so is that is that explaining that they're, they're, they're so dumb that they can't be affected by the... your 
But then, but, but then they're affected by the the visions, right? Yeah, I think, so. but not the pain. Yeah. So that it's that's a, like it just kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to think about. <laughs> you don't think about it. You're supposed to turn your brain off and watch this fucking plastic ape mask movie. Oh, uh, taking the heavy political allegory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are lots of um, lots of really good stunt work in it. Yeah, yeah, there is. There's a scene where a horse rolls over on a guy, a whole bunch of, yeah, like, riding stunts, and there was a whole bunch with that, um, trailer, there was the, the, the obvious rear screen Yeah, 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 the way, where they cut in. Yeah, but there were some nice stunts, like, the guy gets hit by a branch and he falls down, and you can see his mattress. Yeah. They've got, like, a bunch of leaves, and he hits the leaves, and the leaves move in, like, the shape of a mattress. Oh, did I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, I mean, like, the guy was on a thing, he got hit by a tree. Yeah, and knocked off a like, like a, a full pelt, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that? <laughs> now land here. <laughs> Don't land here! Crank! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, in conclusion, oh, this is just such a, a violent, weird, obscure, dark movie that just pivots in a direction that I would never have expected from a Planet of the Apes movie, and I don't think a lot of people Nowadays, I've seen it. I don't think a lot of people would expect it to be what it is. <laughs> no, yeah. Planet of the Apes. Oh yeah, it's about apes. No, no, no. <laughs> it is, but it's also about mutants underground with telepathic powers worshipping a nuclear really, bomb. Really? Really the main character are the nuclear bombs that went off. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's yeah. the entire, that's the entire, like, premise for yeah. the entire <laughs> fucking thing. <laughs> and then COVID's rolling, it's like, stop the war in Vietnam. Nuclear <laughs> warfare is bad. War is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, movie. Yeah, if you don't know what the fucking Cold War was, which we're getting to the point now where, like, they. Well, the, people are starting to forget. Yeah, where people. Uh, I read a thing where people were, were talking about how they talk to their young co workers or something, and they talk about, oh, yeah, you know, I, I wasn't there for 9 11 or whatever. So there's been, there's going to be like young mm. people that don't even know about the Cold War. Yeah. So you can watch this movie and they're like all the historical context. It's just fucking. <laughs> no one's going to watch this movie. It's just going to fade, and fade into fucking obscurity. Yeah. No one's going to watch this movie. <laughs> they're going to watch the new one with James Franco. And then they're going to be like, man, that was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to be like, ah, I love movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too slow. <laughs> yeah, straight line. There's not enough explosions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. stupid. <laughs> yeah, watch Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Watch Dune. Yeah, watch Dune. <laughs> David Lynch's Dune. <laughs> Jar of all 50s, Dune. Have you seen that documentary? It's so like. I'm gonna watch that. Oh, I watched a little bit of it. It's one. an ego bank. Uh, it's like a two hour Man, ego. this is what I was gonna do, and this is what I was gonna I was do. going to make the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> And this is my son to play Paul Atreides. He was going to actually become the embodiment of the prophet. But, but you didn't do it, though. You yeah, didn't he, do it. You didn't do it. <laughs> it didn't happen. I was going to write the greatest <laughs> album of all time. Oh. That I overshadowed Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Oh. I never did it, oh. but I was going <laughs> to. Fuck you, Joe I was gonna, I was gonna write the great American novel. It's gonna be called Billy and the Clonosaurus. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I should get the credit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, thank you for watching, Billy and the Clonosaurus. <laughs> you should, um, you should cut in a clip there. That's a Simpsons reference. We should cut in a clip of the Simpsons. Yep. Oh, I did smash my phone. Now I. I finally have time to do what I've always wanted, write the great American novel. Mine is about a futuristic amusement park where dinosaurs are brought to life through advanced cloning techniques. I call it Billy and the Clonosaurus. Oh, you have got the beginning, sir. First you think of an idea that has already been done, and then you give it a title that nobody could possibly like. Didn't you think this was a list for 18 months? Every magazine cover had it. Popular movies of all time, sir. What were you thinking? I mean, thank you all. Come again.